Yes, right. The two minute drill, and it's gonna be different because I don't have articles and whatnot. We just gonna talk about the Swamp Kings, the documentary exclusively on Netflix surrounding the Florida Gators during the Urban Meyer Tim Tebow era. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people, because they know and they watch me, they know I'm a Gator fan. So I'm pretty sure they really want to know how I felt about this. So let's talk about Swamp King, shall we? Your main stars, Brandon Silas, Major White. You also have Brandon Spice, Tim Tebow, uh, Amar Black. Some of the guys that was talking, because, uh, of course, Urban Myers. Uh, you heard from Dan Mullen. You know, you heard from some other people doing this four episode documentary of the Florida Gators. And, you know, we're going to kick it off with this. You know, they talked about Urban Meyer and what he did at the University of Utah with his quarterback, Alex Smith, at the time. It was between the Florida Gators and the Notre Dame Fighting Irish to see who can grab Urban Meyer from the University of Utah. It happened to be the Florida Gators for the 2005 season. Chris Leak is the quarterback in his junior year and doesn't go well. You go, I think you went, I think we went nine and three that year. Some tough losses, and all three losses were in conference. So there was no fighting for the, the SEC crown, which would have been against LSU. Nevertheless, he had to go out. He recruited Tim Tebow to come to the University of Florida. And then when Tim Tebow came to the University of Florida, Brandon Spice came. Brandon James came. That was the stars of that class. Number one recruiting class coming to Florida. And doing that class coming to Florida, finished it off in 2006 with a national championship. You know, we were 12-1. and one. The only loss came to Auburn that year. And around that time, uh, Auburn had our number. Auburn, we could not, we could not be Auburn to save our lives around this time. That's like the only team we couldn't be. But we lose to Auburn, and everybody was anticipating a Ohio State Michigan rematch for the next championship. Problem was, they played, they played each other at the end of the regular season. Ohio State escaped with that win. A very close game, highly contested game, back and forth. It could have went either way. Ohio State prevailed over Michigan in Columbus, Ohio. Florida Gators go on to the SEC Championship against Arkansas when they had Darren McFadden as they start running back. Took care of them, beat them by 10. And then with all the polls and stuff, Florida got the nod against Ohio State in the National Championship game. Open the kickoff. Ted again takes it all the way back. And due to a team celebration, they actually end up injuring Ted again, Jr. And Florida went on to beat the brace off the number one team of Ohio State with a Heisman Trophy winner quarterback, Troy Smith, to the tune of 41 to 14. Yeah, we took Ohio State score and we flipped it to make our score. That's how bad it was. With the injury to Ted again, because opening kickoff, he took it back to the house. Straight to the house. And that was it. That's that's pretty much all they pretty much all they can muscle because it was Florida from that point forward. Tim Tebow does his thing, comes in, runs it, in, who does that. He had a couple of jump passes in them, but for the first one being against LSU. And I mean, oh says hey, you see this. Urban Meyer, Chris Lee, you see what Chris Lee is holding? Gators win BCS title. That's the BCS area for y'all, all you young folks out there who have been enthralled into the college football playoff realm. That was the BCS before, okay? So we got that one. We took care of that. Now Brandon Silas is gone. He's going to the NFL. Chris Lee is a singer. He's leaving. It's Tim Tebow's team going into next year. It's Tim Tebow. It's Brandon Spice time. So you're replacing your leaders on offense and defense with your backups of Tim Tebow and Brandon Spice. Let's get to it. Next year comes about. Doesn't work out very well, okay? So I'm going to say, I'm going to put this picture right here. Actually, I'm leader. I'm going to take this off. So the next year, we come in. It's a struggle. 
It's a struggle. I think we finished nine and three that year. Tim Tebow wins the Heisman. I think he was like the first sophomore to ever win the Heisman or the second sophomore. He is a, he's in a rare company of sophomores winning the Heisman at that time, okay? I'm going to put it like that. It was a very rare company of sophomores winning the Heisman at that time. And this was just a rough year, okay? Brandon Sprites had to have a come-to-Jesus moment with himself because – you need to be the leader of the defense that Brandon Salas was so this defense can be what it need to be. And also that year we played Georgia, and Georgia humiliated us, embarrassed us. The first touchdown, you know, Sean Marino dives in, and then the whole bench clears in, in celebration from the Georgia side. It was just an embarrassment. Urban talked about it, but he didn't talk about it in that. He talked about it, I think it was episode three when we on our way back. And this is what we're going to pick up at. Episode three, we come back. We are beating everybody. When I mean beat, we are we not just winning. We are beating everybody down until we get to Ole Miss. Ole Miss. And it's a home game, by the way. It's a home game. The game, the, the game is in. Is in Gainesville, Florida. Is in Florida. This is 2008 we're talking about here. And like nobody is giving Ole Miss a chance in 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 the world to knock off this Florida team because this Florida team is whooping on everybody. It like you're not touching this team. Gators are ranked. They was ranked fourth in the country, working in three and zero against a two and two team, and like yo. Florida was bulldozing people in the first two games. Like, I can't even tell you how devastating this was, but guess what? Florida scores, and it's 30-31. Ole Miss blocks the extra point. It is 30 31 old miss. Florida does what they need to do. They get the stop, and you have Tim Tebow. It is fourth and one, and it's Tim Tebow. Those of you who you only have to be Florida fans to know this. When you see fourth and one and you see 15 in blue back there at quarterback, you know, you just know in your mind. All right, this. Florida finna win this game. They got Tim Tebow fourth and one. On they need is a field goal to win. Oh, they ain't gonna do it. And this picture that is on the screen right now, those of you who are watching on YouTube, Ole Miss stopped Tim Tebow on fourth and one. Never stating loss for Florida. Devastating loss. I mean. It hurts because you just knew it. Everybody and their grandmama just know. Tim, they old miss ain't finna stop Tebow from getting three feet. You ain't stopping him from getting three feet. They did. They stopped Tim, Tim Tebow from getting three feet. Shocked the world. Number four goes down at home to old miss. And this is where the, the speech from Tim Tebow comes into play at that press conference. He said what he said. It wasn't scripted. It was how he was feeling at the moment in time because Superman got shut down. Superman was stopped. Somehow, Old Miss found a kryptonite, some kryptonite enough to stop Tim Tebow. And he said what he said at that press conference, which is hanging up in Gainesville right now, is on a plaque. I believe it's I believe it's on this that Ben Griffin Stadium, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. And it was it was that. From that point forward, Brandon Spice, the leader of that defense, took up. Tim Tebow didn't let up. They kept it going. And by the way, speaking of Georgia, I couldn't find the picture, but. 
Brandon Spike set the tone for the Georgia game. If y'all can go back and look, first play of the game, Brandon Spikes lays no Sean Marino out. First play of the game, talking trash to him after he made the hit. And from that point forward, you know how the embarrassment that Georgia gave Florida the year before when everybody on the Georgia team celebrated in the end zone? Brandon, that, when that play happened and Florida got embarrassed, same thing happened the year after. Brandon Spice laid out no Sean Marino and told and let him know about it. Georgia was in for it. And by the way, you know who the quarterback was for the Georgia Bulldogs at that time? Matthew Stafford. Who's the quarterback for the Los Angeles Rams? Laid him out. Florida went on to embarrass Georgia. Paid back for 07. Came in 08. Came in 08. And then from that point forward, Florida was not looking back. All the way to the national championship game against Oklahoma. And taking down Heisman Trophy runner Sam Bradford in the Oklahoma Sooners. Now, I will say they didn't have uh, DeMarco Murray at that time. If they had DeMarco Murray, we might be having a different conversation here. Matter of fact, we might not be having a Swamp Kings document because they had DeMarco Murray. They probably could have won that game. Because if I remember correctly, that, that's a championship game. I forgot who the backup running back was. But Florida had three goal line stops. Three. They stopped them three times from getting in the end zone on four plays. Three trips to the red zone for Oklahoma. They couldn't come over with they couldn't come over with nothing. Three goal line stops by that Gator defense led by Brandon Spice. Okay. Shout out to Major Wright because in one in because in that in that championship game, Sam Breath was trying to hit one of the receivers running. Free on the free down the sideline, and Major Ray had a decision to make. He can go for the interception, or at least try to intercept it, or he can knock the receiver out and let him, and let and let it be known we we came to play some football. He chose the latter. He laid the receiver out, and it was known Florida came to play some football in that championship game. By the way, which was down in Miami. That that championship game was down in Miami. By the way, I'm going to win that one two and three years. Urban Myers, Tim Tebow. National champions, two and three years. Can we go back to back? Can we make it happen? By the way, we beat Alabama and Nick Saban in the ACC title game to get there, by the way. The reason why I brought that up because uh, the very next year, as you see Tim Tebow and Urban Herbin on their second national championship together, the next year, you had a team go 12-0. 12-0. And what we find out in the document of Swan Creams this episode, I think this is episode four. This is, I think this is, yeah, this is the last episode, episode four. You're undefeated and you're not enjoying the process of being undefeated. You're not enjoying the process. That's what's crazy to me to find this out. You are undefeated, you are the reigning defending national champions. You are undefeated, and throughout this journey, you are not enjoying the process. And by the way, you blowing people out. It was a beatdown. Week after week after week after week after week. One of the most notable ones is Tennessee, because that game was in Knoxville, Tennessee. Why? Because Tennessee was went learn not to kick it to number 25. And those who are Gator fans and Knoxville fans know what, who I'm talking about. For those of you who don't know, that was Brandon James. They kept kicking to Brandon James, and Brandon James made them pay it every time. Brandon James, that's Brandon James' breakout game is against Tennessee. For whatever reason, when it comes to Tennessee, they kick it to him. He's taking a punt return back for a touchdown. He's taking a kick return back for a touchdown. And then if he's not doing that, he's taking a punt return or a kick return to the other side of the field. Every time against Tennessee. I remember at one point watching one of the games live, Phil Foreman told his punter, do not kick it to him. What did the punter do? He kicked it to Brandon James. What did Brandon James do? He took it back to the house. And Phil Foreman's on the sideline livid at his punter. He's like, I told you not to kick it to him. LSU. 
suffer the wrath for Florida and another jump and another jump pass again. Georgia got demolished. Florida State didn't want no parts of it. Nevertheless, 12 and 0, and you're not happy. You're not, you're not enjoying the journey of being 12 and 0 and making it to another SEC title game and a rematch against Alabama and Nick Saban. And this is where Nick Saban made his name. As that's why when we see analysts today and they say who's gonna win the SEC and they're picking Alabama, you can go all the way back to 2009 right here because. Nick Saban in Alabama got paid back. They got paid back on Florida. While Florida wasn't joined being 12 and 0 and undefeated, Alabama made it known like, yo, y'all got us last year. We coming back with vengeance and let it be known. So on to add injury to insults. The insult is us not enjoying being 12 and 0. And the injury is Alabama feeling some type of way of not being able to beat us last year. And they took it out on us. This is the picture from that game. Tim Tebow's crying, which became a thing for people to laugh at because people didn't like Tim Tebow for whatever reason. Tim Tebow is a guy who does everything right. Like Tim Tebow, does, even Brandon Spikes in the document said, "Yo, I tried to show pictures of certain, a certain, of certain things, meaning uh, ladies in in certain ways, and Tim Tebow wasn't having it. So Brandon Spikes knew Tim Tebow was really about living life right." Living life about God and what is right and not doing what's wrong. And by the end of the documentary this year, matter of fact, this is exact year, people are getting in trouble with the law left and right. I think there was like 31 arrests with this team. And Urban Myers didn't kick people off the team because I can't think of the guy's name, but when he kicked them off the team a year later, he overdosed on drugs and died. And that it's still to this day, from what Urban said in the documentary, it hunts him to this day. Because he felt like he probably could have did something different and he would still be here on his on the earth. And he's not. But it's a lot of things that was left out in this documentary. But I one thing I do, I agree with Tim Tebow. It should have been three championships in four years in the Urban Meyer era. Three champ or three championships in five years in the Urban Meyer era. That 09 team should have won. If they would have just enjoyed the journey, they would have, I feel like they would have had to, they would have escaped Alabama. They would have escaped Alabama. According to everybody else, nah, they wouldn't have did it. Da, da, da. If that team, because that team was a, that team, you still had Tom Tebow, you still had Percy Harvey, you had Chris Rainey, you still had Brandon James, Brandon Stice still the leader of that defense, Omar Black, Janoris Jenkins. That team was still loaded from last, from the season before. Aaron Hernandez, Cam Newman's still on the team. But they didn't enjoy the journey, and they got punched in the mouth, rightfully so. Now, the reason why I have Aaron Hernandez and Cam Newton up there, we didn't hear nothing about Aaron Hernandez. We heard about the one trouble he got in, but, but just like with Aaron Hernandez all the other players, they found they had a lawyer, found a way to, whatever charge they were brought to him, found a way to get it off off their record, expunge, whatever the case may be, in business as usual. That might have been a detrimental to a guy like Aaron Hernandez. Okay. And that might have gave Aaron Hernandez the feeling that I can do whatever and can, I can get off with it, which led to some things that he shouldn't have done that nobody would ever condone with what Aaron Hernandez did after he left the University of Florida. Playing for the New England Patriots. So he would never you know, being told you you were not wrong. What you did, Aaron Hernandez was wrong. Okay. And what and I'm sorry that it went that way in your life and it's been like that. But you shouldn't have did what you did and you did. Cam Newton. I now the question is because at that moment of time, Aaron Mount won King of Players off the team. So what happened for that Cam Newton to get kicked off the team? Because it, I think it was arm robbery or Berkeley one or two. Laptops and all type of stuff was stolen at the University of Florida. But in a sense, actually gave Cam Newton the out that he needed because he ended up going to Auburn, winning that next championship that one year he played for them. And he was drafted number one overall to the Carolina Panthers. So he had a pretty good career after he made his dumb mistake. But we didn't hear from Cam Newton, though. I would, love, I would like to hear from Cam Newton, all right? He ain't the only one. You know, Cam Newton, we didn't hear from. What about Reggie Nelson? 
Okay. That picture you see of Reggie Nelson down at the bottom right, it's that game in 2006 against LSU. When he made that hit on that receiver, you knew Florida won the Florida was going to win that game. Because if he didn't make that play and that receiver caught it, LSU would have been inside the 20-yard line of Florida going in to score and I think to take the lead. But that hit by Reggie Nelson, let it be known that LSU is not coming to the swamp and winning this game. Okay. Up, let's go up above Reggie Nelson. Percy Harvin, man. The most electrifying guy in college football at that time. Why we can't hear from Percy Harvin, man? He was the electrifier of the team. Went on to have a pretty good, pretty okay NFL career with the Minnesota Vikings. Too bad it didn't pan out the way everybody would like to obey. The most electrifying guy on the field was number one in, in Gators. We didn't hear from him. The, the big guys up front, we go to the top left. The Pouncy Twins, where were they at? The guys who were stoic on the offensive line, who kept the offensive line together. Why we couldn't hear from them. And... The reason why I have Chris Leak in the middle, because before Tim Tebow and Urban Meyer, there was no two system quarterback, and if there was, it didn't work that it didn't last that long. So why not hear from Chris Lee? How did Chris Lee feel that Tim Tebow comes in, and then at, at key moments, not at any moment, but at key moments of the game, Tim Tebow getting enough? We gonna do this. I need you to get the first down. And Chris Lee is on the sideline. You have to share your time on the field with the backup quarterback. They got you a national championship, as you see the picture I chose. With Chris Lee is holding up the the championship trophy right there, the crystal ball. But I want to I want to hear from Chris, the main person I wanted to hear from was Chris Lee, because Chris Lee was there at the beginning of all this, where it was devastating as a quarterback of Chris Lee caliber trying to be in the spread offense. Then the very your last year, your senior year, you're splitting time with Tim Tebow because Tim Tebow is a le- Tim Tebow is that dude. As a freshman, I would love to hear from Chris Lee, but we didn't. These are just some of the questions I have from the episode. But it was a very good documentary, though. I do love the fact that Urban Meyer put it on himself that that 019 came up short because if that team didn't come up short. Your party would have had three of these. That's the picture on the right. Instead of looking like what you look like after that in a, at that SEC championship game in 08 and 09 against Nick Saban. And guess what? It was Urban Meyer was either the one on the left or the one on the right. There was no in-between with Urban Meyer. Uh, he loved winning, but he didn't handle winning in the correct way. And he couldn't handle losing. For whatever reason, he couldn't handle winning or losing in the proper manner. And I don't know what it was. His thirst for winning like overtook him and then it overtook the team. That's why that old 19 could not enjoy being 12 and 0 going into the SEC championship game against Nick Saban and Alabama. And then what happened? You get punched in the mouth and Alabama goes on to beat Texas to win the national championship, which it should have been Florida. But it's in the history books. It is what it is. But yeah, Swamp Kings. Very good documentary. Thoroughly enjoyed it. That is your two-minute drill.